untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Gruel Burn deck as voted on by my supporters from Patreon. And the deck features a new card added in the latest anthology expansion, Atarkas Command, a 2 mana instant that lets us choose two modes between our opponents cannot gain life this turn, we deal 3 damage to each opponent, we may put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield, and creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 and gain reach until end of turn. So we're typically going to deal 3 damage and give our creatures plus 1 plus 1, making Atarkas Command a perfect burn card, especially in a deck that can put out some cheap creatures to make use of that plus 1 plus 1 bonus. So the perfect card alongside Atarkas Command is Burning Tree Emissary, the 2 mana 2 2 human shaman that when it enters a battlefield adds red and green to our mana pool, so we can quickly deploy our hands, play out all our creatures first, and then eventually play our Atarkas Command to get in for a ton of extra damage. And then outside of Atarkas Command and Burning Tree Emissary, we're kind of like a mono red burn deck, so at 1 mana we've got most of the usual suspects with the full playset of Gitu Lava Runner, a 1-2 that gets plus 1 plus 0 and haste as long as we have 2 or more instant and or sorcery cards in our graveyard. We've got the full playset of Shock as a cheap burn spell dealing 2 damage to any target, and Soulscar Mage a 1-2 with prowess, so gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non-creature spell, and then also puts minus 1 minus 1 counters on opposing creatures when we deal damage with our burn spells. Then at 2 mana, besides Burning Tree and Atarkas Command, we have 4 copies of Vyashino Pyromancer, a 2-1 that when it enters a battlefield deals 2 damage to target player or planeswalker, so it's both a creature and a burn spell, and it also has the wizard creature type, which is relevant alongside Wizard's Lightning, which normally costs 3 mana to deal 3 damage to any target at instant speed, but if we control a wizard only costs a single red, making it a very efficient burn spell. Then we also have the full playset of Lightning Strike, always deals 3 damage for 2 mana, and then topping off our curve, the full playset of Bonecrusher Giant can first use the Stomp Adventure to deal 2 damage to any target, and then a nice 4-3 creature afterwards. And then Light of the Stage gives us a bit of card advantage, we can spectacle it for 1 mana if our opponent lost life this turn, and then we can exile the top 2 cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards. And then the mana base also includes 4 copies of Aramana Peruins, in case we're flooding out can still be sacrificed to deal 2 damage to each opponent to potentially burn them out. And then we've got 4 basic mountains and 12 red-green dual lands with the pathway, rootbound crag and stomping ground. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Probably gonna just shock myself with the stomping ground. And then Soulscar into probably Pyromancer. Take it from there. Let's see what we're up against. Hashap Oasis points towards a green Stompy or Gruel deck. Lanor Elves we do want to take out. I'm probably going to Stomp it. So I have the option of playing the Bone Crusher next turn. Also have the option of Pyromancer plus Shock if that lines up better. Alright, opponent's a green-white company deck, presumably. And yeah, Lobster Beast is one of the more annoying creatures to get past. So... Probably no point in playing a Vyashino Pyromancer when it gets blocked easily. Bone Crusher, we can potentially still muscle past a Lobster Beast thanks to the Soulscar Mage. Opponent chumps. That's fine. And I can even attack with a Soulscar Mage, as Lightning Strike will help us shrink down the beasts. And then I can still add another Soulscar to the board. And if they block Giants, we can just use a Shock, although that would be a trade. So I think this is probably the preferred outcome, all things considered. Alright, so we got past the 5 5, opponents at 12. And we still have 6 points of burn in hand. 4 mana means our opponents could cast company. So having instant speeds, ways to shrink down creatures could be important. 
It's just gonna be a Kazandu Mammoth instead. That's fine. And a Lovestruck makes a 1-1. Alright, so... I'm probably just going to attack with everyone here. And we'll see what happens. If they block a Soulscar Mage only, then I can just point Shock at the opponent's face, get in for 8, and then the double Pyromancers will finish them off. If they jump Bone Crusher and block a Soulscar, then we might take a different approach. Our opponent just takes it. Alright, well, in that case, they seem pretty dead. And a Pyromancer to close out the game. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Ideally, we can wait on casting the Atarkas commands until we can attack with Burning Tree instead of having to cast it with the floating mana. So, best case scenario, we draw something like a Vaishino Pyromancer or Bone Crusher Giant. So we can maybe use the floating mana to cast something else other than Atarka's command. Put on black whites and an Inquisition to kick things off. I imagine it takes the burning tree. Alright, so probably gonna end up using the Atarka's command here. Get one extra point of damage in. And set up our Lava Runner to get the plus one plus zero bonus next turn if we shock. But we're almost out of cards. Inquisition gonna take away shock. And unlike Thoughtseize, they didn't have to take two to cast it. Bonus at 11. Lightning Strike puts them to eight. Not sure what type of deck they're playing. Ooh, Lightning Helix. That's unfortunate. I think I still keep the Lightning Strike in hand. There is a risk that we draw an expensive card that we won't be able to deploy in time in case of another discard spell. But we might need to point it at a creature. Atarka's Command would have been a perfect response to Lightning Helix to prevent a life gain. So we've got six points of burn in hand, potentially two more on the battlefield. Now I should probably aligning strike face. Don't want to find myself unable to cast all my spells in response to another discard effect. Alright, this can attack. I could try to attack us commands to pump the Lava Runner, but opponent's got a lot of mana up, so I think we'll uh, play it safe. Call against command, we really get to punish here. As we get to pump the Lava Runner and deal 3 damage. But another Lightning Helix puts the opponent back up to 8. So yeah, Mardu control here. Doing a good job of fending off our burn spells. Can sacrifice Ramanap Ruins, put them to 6. At least they haven't presented a win condition yet, so we have time to draw more burn spells. Although I mentioned they have more removal in hand. If they have Call Against Command they're planning to use in our draw step, we can still potentially cast any instance we draw. Like this here at Tarkas Command. So our opponent's at a virtual 3 life. It's gonna stun my face. So that gives them a win condition. Alright, so reason to cast Atarkos Commands, if I draw Wizard's Lightning, I wouldn't be able to cast both. Otherwise, I think I'm still better off saving it. 
Pyromancer puts the opponent to four, so we're one damage off. And it feels like they've got a Fatal Push in hand, perhaps. Or maybe another Village Rites, which they've shown as well. Atarka's Command would let me trade Pyromancer for Giant. Although, do you have to keep a Lightning Helix in mind as well? Put on discards village rights and a land. And it's gonna thirst the Pyromancer, that's fine. So they are down to one card in hand and double looting in the graveyard. We're at 14. The second reason to Atarka's command besides Wizard's Landing is if we draw another Ramana Prunes. But I think we'll hold. And Lightning Strike is perfect here. So we can Lightning Strike face, put them to one, and then ideally find another burn spell so we can respond to a Lightning Helix with Atarka's command. But I'm definitely going to fire off the Lightning Strike as soon as we get priority in the end step. Take four. Does our opponent want to fall to one? Or do they have a response? Opponent falls to one. Alright, I'll take any cheap burn spell. Another Atarka's command should wrap things up. So opponent cannot gain life. Deal three. And if they have a lightning helix, we can Atarka's command again. And yeah, they had one in hand, so definitely paid off to wait. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the fine hands. Turn one Dread Wanderer, so a black aggro deck. Still fine to shock myself, I think. Despite our opponent being an aggressive deck, we're probably still the overall aggressor in the matchup. Scrap heap, sure. So we can play Burning Tree into Pyromancer to be mana efficient. And could consider trading for a Scrounger. Take 5 down to 9. This is a close call. If our opponent plays something like Spawn of Mayhem, it might be difficult to race. But then I also don't really want to use two burn spells to take it out, so I'll take 5. Yeah, there's a Spawn of Mayhem, unfortunately. And yeah. Having to shock ourselves twice with Stomping Ground leaves us at a precarious life total. Second attack with all, and if they block Lightning Strike, they can finish off the spawn. And then I can still play double Soul Scar Mage potentially if they don't. Opponent takes it. So there's no single card that helps me kill Spawn of Mayhem next turn, but we could draw a Tarkos Command to give our creatures reach, which is one way to potentially still block it. In which case, I'm probably better off chumping Scrounger as opposed to trading for a Dread Wanderer, since we would stay alive at one life. Alright, bunch of tapped creatures. So Tarkos Command still our best draw, and could potentially even win the game by pumping the team. Lightning Strike by itself, probably not going to cut it. Thoughtseize is actually beneficial, since we weren't going to be able to deploy both copies of Lightning Strike in time. Opponent is a 9, shock the draw. So yeah, we can shock their face, play a hasty Lava Runner, and that should be game. And yeah, opponent just kind of left themselves dead on board here. So, 
lucky that they cast a Thought Seize. If they didn't cast a Thought Seize, would we have had enough opponents at 11? We sh Lightning Strike them down to 8. And then, yeah, we wouldn't have had another instant in the graveyard to pump up Lava Runner. So I think we would have been one damage short. So that Thought Seize really helped us out. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand could use a second land, but it is incredibly powerful if it does find it. So I think it's worth the risk, especially on the draw. Turn one elves, we can shock. And there's my second land. Could also play a Lava Runner. And then we can cast a Wizard Sliding for one mana next turn. But I think shocking is probably the safest play. Slow the opponent down a little bit. So our opponent is on Gruul. Turn to Robber. Finds a land. And we'll save ourselves one damage. And then we can play Lava Runner. Gruul is usually not a great matchup for us, since their creatures are just slightly bigger than ours. So they can often block our smaller creatures, and then we're forced to use some of our burn spells as removal instead of going upstairs. That's often the case in these aggro mirrors. The deck that's slightly slower, but has slightly larger threats, usually comes out ahead. Voltaic Brawler is manageable, so... Yeah, this looks like a great Atarkas Command turn. And uh, could also Wizard Sliding the Brawler, Atarkas Command, pumping the team. Might be worth it since the Brawler also hits pretty hard on the way back. So deal 3, plus 1, plus 1. Opponent falls to 8. The robber's not going to trigger anytime soon. They might even have to play defense now. Nope, robber's still attacking. And a wizard's lining is just game here. So we definitely had an above average draw here with double burning tree and plenty of efficient wizard's lightnings as well as Atarka's command to pump the team. But six points of burn in hand, even if they have something like shock to kill a creature and they block, they're still dead. Opponent's gonna take it. That's brave. Maybe they have an Ember Cleave and they were planning to kill us on the way back with the Voltaic Brawler, which I guess makes sense. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Even have a couple wizards to go with our wizard sliding. Turn one Inquisition, gonna try and punch a hole in our game plan. Probably takes a light up the stage, which is kind of a built-in two for one. Goes for Pyromancer instead. Put on mono black so far. Thought sees gonna have a look. That's fine. Probably takes a burning tree. Or they could go for another Pyromancer and then hope that there's nothing else to play with the Burning Tree's mana. <laughs> and a Thought Seize, okay. And now they go for the Light of the Stage, fair enough. So I don't have anything to spend my Burning Tree mana on. I guess I'll just Shock. Although it doesn't feel like... I'm gonna have to play it this turn. Maybe there's a creature I need to take out with it. Alright, another Thought Seize. Opponent's down to 14 in the meantime. Takes the Wizard's Lightning, and Lava Runner does have haste at least. And play our Green Mana in case we need to cast an Atarkas Command. Alright, Vito gonna try and gain that life back. And a fatal push on Lava Runner. Alright, so. As the dust settles, 
It's a burning tree versus Vito with her opponent at 10. Wizard's Lightning can take out Vito. Although for now I like attacking. If they block we can shock instead and keep the Wizard's Lightning for Faceless Haven. And then we'll see what our opponent does. If they play land, activate Vito, we might Wizard's Lightning it. Alright, Knight of the Ebon Legion is kind of scary. They can pump it with 3 mana, so it's a pretty decent blocker too. So shocking it is not going to work. I can wait until I attack. They block and then they pump and then we can shock. But our opponent knows about to shock in our hand. If they double block, that could still work out fine. So could consider using the Wizard's Lightning on Veto now. Or I could keep it to maybe go face. Alright, probably worth it to play Stomping Ground untapped. And have access to both my burn spells. Opponent blocks with Vito and Knight. So... I think I'm fine to let damage happen. And then just trade for the Knight. Opponent also lets damage happen. And then I'm just gonna pass and then... We have five points of burn in hand. Which we may or may not point upstairs. But I can take the one from Vito. Alright, Ramana Prunes is two more damage. So... If we draw one more burn spell, we could close out the game. Soren gonna threaten to gain life. So if they pump Vito, I'm gonna be forced to kill it in response. Alright. And then Surin plus Haven is also a combo, since this will also be a vampire that they can pump up. So yeah, all of a sudden we're in quite a bit of trouble. Another shock means I can kill the Faceless Haven, but that's four points of burn that aren't going to the opponent. Your opponent animates Haven. Pluses. And yeah. I need to double shock it here, sadly. Soren's still in play. And our opponent's still at 8. Burning Tree. I can use the mana to activate Ramana Prunes, I suppose. And a Fatal Push gonna take it out. So we've got an opponent at 6, but an active Sorin is pretty scary. Puts Champion of Dusk in play, falls to 5, and draws a Swamp. So, yeah, next turn they get to pump the Champion, give it Life Link, and that's probably game over. Gifted Aetherborn, another lifelinker. Yeah, this seems like a pretty tough matchup. Take seven. Surin can also deal three to us. Instead puts the Haunt of Hightower in play, nice. And yeah, we're just dead on board here. Technically, if we had an Atarkas command, we could block the haunts by giving our creatures reach. But that's not gonna happen. Alright, so we fall to mono black vampires. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Some early creatures and double Atarkas command. Can potentially deal a lot of damage. 
And we'll lead with Soulscar Mage facing Emeria's Call. So, some sort of white deck. A red white. Opponent passes. And then I'm just gonna attack for one here. And play Lava Runner before we deploy a Tarkas command. Ooh, a Lightning Helix we can punish. So... I can prevent the opponent from gaining life or deal 3 damage, kind of amounts to the same. And then give the Soul Scar Mage plus 1 plus 1. And next turn I have the option of playing Lava Runner and playing a Tarkos Command, which will also give it haste. Now uh, Danto Vanguard. Alright, Burning Tree, another nice pickup. So, can play Burning Tree. Now, thanks to the Soulscar Mage, we can just remove the Vanguard with minus one, minus one counter, so the four life is not going to save it. But I don't think we even have to bother with the uh, Vanguard this turn. Could also Lightning Strike, I suppose. Maybe that's better, just Lightning Strike face attack. And then keep the command for next turn when we can attack with Burning Tree. Yeah, sure. And so we'll still give the Lava Runner haste, so that's why we're main phasing everything. Opponent's down to 10. And hopefully we don't get punished for not killing the Vanguard. Smashing for two takes out Soulscar Mage. And I'll down to Vanguard attacks. That's acceptable. So they seem pretty dead to a Tarkas command, dealing three, pumping the team. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Soulscar Mage into Burning Tree plus maybe Stomp. Use your mana efficiently, and then we can play the Giant on turn three. Turn one Forest into Pelt Collector. I'll gladly Stomp, and we even drew another Burning Tree, so this is perfect. Double Burning Tree into Stomp. This would be the perfect hand to draw Atarka's command as well. Now we are almost out of cards, so we need to make sure we can output a lot of damage quickly, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll attack, and the plan is to play Bone Crusher here. Our opponent didn't have a turn to play, so they kept a pretty slow one. We've got five points of burn in hand. And a Gruul Spellbreaker, even as a 4-4, is not all that impressive. So, if I were to attack with everyone, they block Giants. Five plus 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So they wouldn't quite be dead, but they would be at 1, which is probably good enough. If I just use my two burn spells on the Spellbreaker, then we deal 7, plus 4 is 11. Yeah, I think I'm better off putting them to 1. And if they block anything other than Bone Crusher, they're dead. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a very Bone Crusher heavy hand. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. A bit of a slow hand since we won't be able to play the Soulscar Mage on one if we want to be guaranteed two mana on turn two. 
But against another burn deck, this hand is perfect since Bone Crusher is one of the better cards against aggressive decks. Opponent also Gruel Wizards, maybe. And we're just gonna do the same. Could also go Soul Scar Mage and one mana Wizard Lightning, but we'll save that for a slightly larger creature. Alright, there's a Burning Tree. So they might play their own Bone Crusher, instead it's Pyromancer. So, definitely looks like the mirror match, although they might have some slight differences in the deck list. So they might be keeping up Wizard's Lightning to answer Bone Crusher Giant. So I probably don't want to play Bone Crusher Giant this turn. And instead I can play Pyromancer Soul Scar Mage or Pyromancer Light of the Stage or Pyromancer Keep Up Wizard's Lightning. Although as we mentioned, probably want to keep Wizard's Lightning for potentially opposing copies of uh, Bone Crusher Giant. So I could just stomp again, play Soul Scar Mage. I kind of like that idea. And then probably stomp the Pyromancer to make Wizard's Lightning more expensive. And we'll see if they fire one off here just to empty their hand. Right, it's going to be a shock instead on their own Pyromancer to fizzle the Bone Crusher so we can play the creature half. So that's definitely a valid play. Although the constraint is not amount of Bone Crusher Giants we can cast, but do we have time to deploy them all in time? So not necessarily a bad trade for us. Second Burning Tree. So opponent's got their own Bone Crusher. So once they play Bone Crusher, we can have the sequence of Pyromancer Wizard Slinding the Bone Crusher. And our opponent's now empty handed. So we'll just play Bone Crusher to block the Burning Trees. A Tarkos Command off the top could be bad. Opponent plays Bone Crusher. And a Lap Runner, which doesn't have a good attack. Alright. Play Pyromancer. And then I should probably kill the Bone Crusher now so we don't get blown out by a Tarkas command. And pass. Got another line of the stage for more card advantage. Bowman Courier can be great if you play it early. Definitely a consideration in this deck list. And our opponent's gonna attack just to kind of cycle the courier. I think I'll block like this. Still take out a burning tree. And if they want a card from courier, then they'll have to sacrifice it and we keep Pyromancer. So our opponent only got in for three damage. And Pyromancer puts us to nine. So here I'm liking Pyromancer Light of the Stage, find the land hopefully. I did not find a land, but we should still be able to deploy all those exiled cards. So we definitely want to play defense here. We've got extra resources to work with, our opponent's the aggressor. Soul Scar Mage might be worth taking out. Although I have to Lightning Strike face if I want to enable Spectacle. Or I can try to attack, but that seems pretty risky. So yeah, let's go upstairs. Now our opponent is building up a pretty big board of creatures. So an Atarka's command of the top could be quite punishing. Probably worth it to play a Lab Runner. Or I could keep up Wizard's Lining, maybe even take out the Soul Scar Mage. We also don't have a Tarkus Command, so it's not like we get to leverage those extra creatures better than the opponent. Might be worth it to attack with the Bone Crusher to start applying a bit of pressure. 
And we can blow out a double block with Wizard's Lightning. Yeah, I'm pretty happy to take out two creatures here. Now an Atarka's Command is a lot less scary. So opponent attacks. So if they have a Tarkus Command and I take it, we fall to two. So then we could die to another burn spell. I think I should still aim for a longer game here. Even though now removal on Bone Crusher leaves me with an empty board. Alright. I think that was still worth it. Especially with another line of the stage now. So Lava Runner times two can probably attack and just play Bone Crusher. Yeah, and then keep the light of the stage for next turn. And now we don't lose to any single top deck. And land should leave them pretty dead on board. So yeah, our opponent's version may not be playing a light of the stage. I've seen deck lists without it. So that's one of the differences that pulled us ahead in this game, besides just drawing more copies of Bone Crusher Giant. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Rootbound Crag a little awkward, but it's the cost of including a Tarkas command. And then turn one, run out a Soul Scar Mage, take it from there. Well, let's see what we're up against. Steam Vents tapped, Burning Tree could be great. Do I light up the stage? Do I play a Lava Runner is the decision here. I think it might be worth it to light with stage, because maybe I'll find an untapped land. Alright, and then can still play my Lava Runner. And then next turn I can play Burning Tree and use that mana to cast a Tarkus Command, which will also pump up the Lava Runner. Opponent's gonna loot. And it looks like a reanimator deck with Scholar of the Lost Trove. So, yeah. Deal three damage, pump the team. And next turn we could present lethal with another Atarkas command and Wizard's Lightning. Opponent's gonna discover gain two life, set up their big turn for next turn most likely. See Mizzix Mastery discarded and another looting. So they're looking for maybe a way to reanimate the Scholar. And assuming they discard a double Mastery, they probably have another one in hand to cast this Emergent Ultimatum. But uh, yeah, Atarka's Command should close out the game for us. Deal 3, pump the team. And this is already lethal before we even cast the Wizard's Lightning. So yeah, this game kind of shows the power of Atarka's Command, speeding up the deck significantly and helping out against combo decks as well. So yeah, overall this Gruul Burn deck is definitely quite powerful, has a lot of potential with those explosive starts featuring Burning Tree and Atarka's Command, both a way to deny life gain, which is pretty nice for a burn deck, as well as pumping the team. So this is yet another viable burn variant in Historic. That'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.